Welcome to the CSUN video learning module on unit conversions. This is the second of two parts. My name is Simon Garrett. In this video, we're all about math, so have your calculator handy. We'll do some more unit conversions, these ones a little more involved than the ones we did in part one. We'll learn how to do unit conversions involving non-SI units and conversions from one scaled unit to another scaled unit, some involving more than one conversion factor. You should review part one of this video before you start. Let's get down to work. Here comes your first question. What is 10.5 inches in centimeters given 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters? Try it. Pause the video while you work on the question. The answer is 26.7 centimeters. When we first look at this question, we notice something immediately. We are given the conversion factor. For calculations involving only SI units, you will be expected to develop your own conversion factors from the unit prefixes. But for calculations involving non-SI units, like inches, you'll be given the conversion factors. The next thing we'll do is write down the two possible conversion factor ratios we might need given the information in the question. Remember, we'll only use one of these in the calculation. Next, we'll write down the information given, 10.5 inches, and multiply by one of the conversion factors we wrote. We'll choose the conversion factor based on dimensional analysis, appropriate cancelling of units. Note that this number has three significant figures and not one as you might think. We base the number of significant figures for the answer on the 10.5 because this conversion factor is exact. 1.0000 inches is exactly equal to 2.54000 centimeters. In effect, the quantity 1 inch and 2.54 centimeters have an infinite number of significant figures. Try this one. Pause the video here. The answer is 0.81 kilometers. Compare this question to the one on the left. They're almost identical. Following the same idea, we'll construct two possible conversion factors. They look like this. Then we'll write down what we know from the question, the given, including its units, and multiply by the appropriate conversion factor. Here's the answer. Let's look at this next problem. Convert 12 millimeters into centimeters. Pause the playback and calculate your answer. Got it? The correct answer is 1.2 centimeters. Let's think about this question for a second because it's a little different to the ones we've done previously. This is a scaled unit to scaled unit conversion. Both centimeters and millimeters are scaled units. We've only dealt with scaled to base unit conversions so far. Actually, this gives us a clue for tackling this question. We could convert millimeters to meters in one step. We know how to do this. Then we could convert meters to centimeters in a second step. We can do this too. We'll tackle these two steps as a solution map, a sort of plan for how we are going to tackle the answer. Each arrow in the solution map means a conversion, and so requires a conversion factor. Let's write two sets of conversion factors. The green conversion factors will do the first conversion, from millimeters to meters, and the blue pair will do the second conversion, from meters to centimeters. Just like before, we'll write down the given starting value with its units, and then multiply by the conversion factors. Since we're doing two conversions here, we'll have two conversion factors in our calculation. Here's the first part, converting millimeters into meters. We could work out the result of this calculation, but there's no need. Instead, we could simply multiply this first part, which we know will have units of meters, by a conversion factor to convert those meters to centimeters. So here's the second part. By stringing the conversion factors together like this, always multiplying, 
we avoid the need to do the calculation in two separate steps with meters as an intermediate value. Because there are two conversion factors, we need to be extra careful to make sure the units cancel appropriately and leave us with the desired units for our answer. The two we chose are highlighted. We'll try another example of a scaled to scaled unit conversion. We're dealing entirely with SI units in this case, and so we are expected to develop our own conversion factors. Pause and give it a go. Here's the correct answer. Were you successful? First, we'll write a solution map. Again, the strategy is to convert scaled to base and then base to scaled. We'll need two sets of conversion factors, the green set for megabytes to bytes and the blue set for bytes to kilobytes. Remember, we'll only need one from the green and one from the blue, eventually. How do we decide which ones? It's all based on unit cancelling. So let's see the final calculation. We'll always write what we've been given with its units, then multiply by the first conversion factor. Then we'll multiply by the second conversion factor to complete the calculation. Double check that we've chosen the correct ones here and the units cancel. Do they? We'll do one more before we move on. What is 67.55 microliters in milliliters? No, we don't even need to know that L means liters. We can still solve this question. Pause here and try it. Here's the answer. Did you get it? If not, here's how we got to do it. Again, we must look at the question first and recognize that this is a scaled unit to scaled unit conversion. Here's our roadmap, the solution map. We're going to convert micro to the base unit and then the base unit to milli. We'll do this in one efficient calculation, stringing conversion factors together. We'll need two sets of conversion factors. One of the green ones will do the first conversion, and one of the blue ones will do the second conversion. We still must know our SI, SI unit prefixes to be able to write any of these four conversion factors. Finally, we'll string it all together, writing down the given quantity, multiplying by one of the green conversion factors to change microliters to liters, and multiplying again to convert from liters to milliliters. Trust me, this two-step approach is much easier than trying to come up with one conversion factor for microliters and milliliters directly. This question is a little bit more complicated, but uses the same basic strategies. First, there is more information here. Be careful to pick through for what you need. Don't be intimidated by all the numbers. The question wants us to convert feet per second into miles per hour. We are not expected to know the conversion factors for these non-SI units, so they are given to us. Try it. Pause here while you work at the answer. The correct answer is 24 miles per hour. Tricky. Let's break the calculation down. First, we'll write a solution map. Now this one is a little different. Notice each conversion step only converts one thing at a time. For the first step, we'll convert feet into miles. We are given a conversion factor for this, so it should be straightforward. In the second step, we'll convert the per second part into per hour, again, one unit at a time. The question gives us the conversion factor for seconds to hours, so this should be straightforward too. Our set of conversion factors come directly from the question and look like this. We'll choose which green and which blue one to use in a second. We'll write down our starting quantity with its units, then multiply by one green conversion factor to change from feet per second into miles per second. Next, without bothering to calculate the first part, we can multiply by a blue conversion factor to change miles per second 
into miles per hour. The same basic ideas are all here. We just need to be a little careful with the unit cancelling. Make sure that this one is set up correctly before continuing. Do the units cancel to give only miles and hours at the end? We'll end with one last example. This question gives us a value in millimeters per month and asks us to convert this number into inches per year. One conversion factor is given. Pause the video here while you work on it. The correct answer is 1.4 inches per year. If you struggled with this one, let me show you how to do it. It's a very good idea to write down a solution map for all unit conversions. In this case, we're going to convert millimeters per month into inches per month into inches per year. We'll need two conversion factors. This question gives us only one. What is the other one we'll need? The second conversion factor is between months and years. This is a trivial case, so we don't need to be provided with it. One year equals 12 months. So we'll develop the blue conversion factors from that. As usual, we'll write down the quantity in units given in the question, 3.0 millimeters per year, and then multiply by one green conversion factor and one blue conversion factor. The conversion factors are chosen based on dimensional analysis. If we have it correct, the units of the answer are the ones we want. In this case, they are. By the way, the order of the conversion factors makes no difference. We could have converted millimeters per month into millimeters per year first using a blue conversion factor if we'd wanted. The answer should be the same. Good job. By this point, the previous example should have strengthened your calculation skills for converting between scaled and scaled units. There are several key things here. The first is a solution map. Use arrows to convert one unit at a time. Each arrow needs to be one conversion factor. Write down your possible conversion factors. You need only one for each conversion for your map. Write the conversion factor and its upside down version too. You'll choose which one of the pair you actually need in the next step. Write down the given quantity and multiply by as many conversion factors as you need, keeping an eye that the units cancel. These sorts of calculations are not difficult if you're organized and remember the basic strategy, but they do take some practice. Good luck.